Good morning, Saturday morning, the 4th of July, Independence Day. It's not going to look the same this year though, is it? So, another waffle with Lindsay. Not run as much this week, probably only run once if I think about it. I had set myself a target eight weeks ago um, to do... Um, five lots of exercise for 30 minutes each week so sort of a, a bit of a challenge which I had achieved um, last week and sort of felt not that I deserved rest but my body was saying it needed a bit of a rest so it's had a bit of a rest um, this week and so as I was pondering that this morning when I was drinking my lovely cup of tea that my husband brought up um, it made me think about um, this passage in Ecclesiastes, which is one that a lot of us will be familiar with. So I'm just going to read it, and then I'm just going to share with you what I felt it was saying to me um, this morning. So it's Ecclesiastes chapter 3, a time for everything. There is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under heaven time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter some stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time to peace. And I suppose if I think about... Um, a time to rest this week from my running but it also made me think about about lockdown and the time that it's given us all um, you know even if we've been busy with being an NHS worker or a key worker or whatever there has been time um, time off days off you know I think Mike's uh, a key worker and um, He's had a couple of long weekends that he had already booked, to be fair. And he was supposed to be going um, to Austria to see his girlfriend's family and to a wedding. Um, and he was advised to, to, to still take that time. And as much as he was a bit cross because it wasn't the plans he'd had, and in some respects it could be seen as a, a waste of annual leave, um, Actually, he really loved the time to just be. And actually, there is a time for everything. And, and, and from the passage, you hear about all the different things. And yet, that was written oh, thousands of years ago, and it still applies today. But how good God has been in this lockdown. If you think back to the very beginning of lockdown and the unusually warm weather we had, what a blessing that was, particularly for those of us who are able to use our gardens and go out, um, and to go out for our walks, and to have that daily exercise. If the weather had been like it has been this last week, on and off rain, on although it's not been cold, it's 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 not exactly enticed you out. Um, and how good it was to be able to make the most of that weather because of lockdown and how I I would say it probably kept people's sanity a bit more because they were able to do that. And you have to look at today and think well there's lots more opening um, you know and one of the bits in the passage said there's a time to hug and a time to refrain and obviously we're in the time to refrain at the moment. Um, Hugh and I popped into town yesterday together, first time 
um, obviously since lockdown, we had some <coughs> Marks and Spencer's vouchers that um, we thought we would use and treat ourselves to one of their, I think it's a dining for £12 or something. So we thought that's what we'd use the vouchers for. So we went together so that we could choose what we wanted to eat. Um, and I have to say, apart from going into town to Sainsbury's or to Marks and Spencer's because they do do certain stuff that um, is good for Dan's diet, I hadn't actually been in town, hadn't walked up um, the Orchard Centre, hadn't walked around the new bit, um, and how different it was and what a different feel it had. Um, I'm not really, I mean, although I like clothes and I quite like shopping, I, I don't know. I have not been in a rush to go and do that, and Hugh certainly hasn't. Um, I'm not in a rush to do it again, if I'm honest. Um, so you do have to say, well, if that's how I'm feeling, if other people are feeling the same, it, it, is the High Street going to seem a very different place? Are people going to go a bit silly today? I hope not, because um, I've watched lots of things on the television this week about being on the front line. There was a, uh, an amazing documentary about a, um, a Spanish doctor uh, who is a... Um, I see, um, you, you know, critical care doctor and how coping with that and how she isolated herself from her family to keep them safe because she didn't want to bring anything home from work and, and then impact them. Um, and she could only talk to her, you know, she made a decision to talk to her little child through the door, through, they had like a, a, a door. Um, to where she was so that he could at least you know touch her hand and talk to her and he had his bedtime story through the door and things like that um, and what a sacrifice that must have been for her but it also um, within that showed a, a, a young 18 year old a Spanish guy um, who completely threw them when he was brought in because up until that point they had been dealing with older people so to see this young man we brought in who was fighting for his life because of coronavirus really had quite an effect on, on the staff and on the team. Uh, and when she was looking at his x-rays, you know, she, you could see the emotion um, and how it was affecting her. Um, and then, you know, she, as you watched her over the time and over, over the documentary, that. You know, she kept checking on this, this, this young man just to see how he was and luckily he's come through it and they got to the point where they're like, he's turned the corner and the relief on their face. So it wasn't his time to die, but it was his time to realise how good life is and what lies ahead of him and that was, that was phenomenal to watch somebody so young to realise that. And you have to look at the garden, which I've talked about a lot, I know. But you know, this week's been about um, sorting a few things out. So I talked to you about the weeds and the, the gold finches and that they'd gone last time, the, the rain really came because they just couldn't go, <laughs> bless them. Um, but this week, my little violas, I've, um, they've had it, they've gone leggy, they look a bit naff. So they've been um, chopped back and given them a little bit more compost and a little bit more love, a little bit of feed. They might come back, but they don't have not cost anything, just a bit of time. But yeah, it's, um, it's a different season and there's different things coming up and that's right. And you have to marvel at how wonderful God is. At, the seasons and the times and how we respond to what he asks of us. You know, if I think about what did God ask of me during lockdown and did I fulfil it and did I have the time to do that? Probably didn't spend as much time with him as I had hoped, if I'm honest really glad there's only one more week of homeschooling as much as Dan's done amazingly well and what the school have done has been amazing I've now had enough um, and it 
it'll be nice to just have to get out when I want and do things that I want to do instead of having to be up and at and ready for school and ready to face whatever subject it is that we've been learning about. Haven't cleaned cupboards out. If I'm honest, I didn't think that was going to happen anyway. Have done a lot of gardening and have learnt loads. Learnt lots of new tricks, new skills, which is good. Um, what am I going to take into the future? My, ne my need, I think, I think this week not running and not having my Christian music and not having that, that time and that space at the start of the day. I've realised how important that is to me. Um, so, yeah, it's taken me till this week to learn it. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay. It's a time. It's a place. They are talking that there's going to be a second wave. Will we, as a nation, um, have learnt the lessons we need to? Will we cope with the second wave? What will happen? How will we deal with it? Will it be localised lockdowns? Who knows? Is it a time to reflect? Is it a time to get a plan in place? Chatting to Jonathan last night and um, his company are not going back into the office till at least October, November time. And then only those that need to be in the office. So for example, I, I think, I don't know, I could be wrong here. I think they've got a game that's coming up for release. Um, so there might be things that need to be done within the office setting that can only be done in the office setting when you get to that point. Um, so Jonathan's convinced he won't be back in the office till next year, if then. Um, that's something that we've learned through lockdown, that there will probably be a lot more people working from home. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I know for Jonathan, he misses the banter in the office, he misses the hubbub of the office, he misses the sparking of ideas. We were brought into this world, God wanted a relational relationship, he wanted that with us. We're relational beings. Um, will that cause more hassle? I don't know. Who knows? We don't know what the future holds. But we do know. We have a God who knows what's right for us. And we just need to listen to him to get into his word. Um, I hadn't thought of the Ecclesiastes passage for a long time. It just came up this morning and you read it and you go, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Written all those thousand years ago, but it's still valid today. And for each one of us, something within that passage will have meant something over the lockdown, over the last week, whatever. And that's awesome and amazing. It sort of blows me away a bit, really. And he was talking, wasn't he, in about Virginia Woolf's book. And how the character felt that uh, the world would go on if she died, the world would go on and the trees would still sway and the wind would still blow. Yeah. It's a time for everything. Are we singing in tune with God's timing? Are we ticking to his clock or our own? Mm. It's a big one to think about, isn't it? So, what's the week ahead got in store? Um, Last week at home, probably a little bit more gardening. Um, if the weather improves, maybe some more running, some more time with God. I really missed my runs and my music, I have to say. Um, and then maybe making some plans uh, for the holidays, the school holidays for Dan, things that we can do. We have got a couple of projects that we talked about having a go at and I'm going to see if I can get him to help me restore a chair and strip it back and 
um, stain it. No, I don't know how that will go. He doesn't particularly like uh, power tools, and we obviously need to sand it with that. But he might enjoy the hand sanding. I don't know. We'll just have to give it a go and see. But there are other things that we need to think about. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a walk. Maybe we'll go somewhere and park the car and have a bit of a wander before the rest of the schools are in real school holidays. Who knows? Let's lift the past, the present and the future to God. Lord, your blueprint for our lives is amazing. You knew the timings of it. <clears throat> you knew the time for us to be born. You know the time for us to die. You know the time for us to do the things we need to do. You know the timing of realisation. The timing is to plant the seeds, to make the plans. The time is to fulfil those plans or make steps towards them. Aha, I know the plans I have for you, the plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Lord, help us to tick to your timing. Help us to line ourselves up with your thoughts and your plans for us. Guide us, Lord, I pray. Help us to appreciate the past, enjoy the moment, and look forward with happiness and anticipation for the good things you have in store for us. Lord, I thank you for the work that goes on in our hospitals, in our research labs. Bless those, Lord, who are trying to find a vaccine or medication that will help with this dreadful, dreadful virus. Lord, I pray for the further unlocking this week. I pray that people will be sensible, that they won't put themselves and others in danger, or the NHS in danger of being overrun. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, that it wasn't. I thank that you that during the peak of the first phase that um, we were able to protect our NHS. And I pray, Lord, now that you would be putting in place things to enable those who are on the front line to process what they've seen and come to terms with it, Lord. I pray the help will be there. I pray for the job situation, Lord. We don't know what the future holds. And maybe, for some of us, this is an opportunity to go in a different direction, to try a different thing, to find a new way forward. Only you can lay those on our hearts, Lord, as we come before you. I pray for the future, Lord. I pray for the different way it's going to look for all of us. I pray that we can embrace it and that we can be looking for the changes so that when we go to the shops we are looking at the floor to see if there's a one-way direction and we're going in the right direction. That we see the marks on the floor that says keep two metres apart. For the different ways in which familiar things to us will be set out, whether that's in restaurants or places that we go to enjoy a coffee. I pray for our times together, Lord, as we begin to meet with family and to enjoy those times together. Lord, I pray that we will as a nation learn to protect each other. And I pray, Lord, as we plough through the rules and regulations as to whether we are ever going to be able to meet up this year or not, um, that your guiding hand 
will be upon all of those things that need to be discussed and planned and thought about. And obviously the wider context of that Lord is it's not our own building and it's not our own equipment that we use. So guide those that make decisions Lord that they can see the whole picture and not just the bit that affects them. Come Lord I pray and bless any time that we spend with you. May we have ears to hear you, hearts to follow and determination to see through the actions. Praise you that you have a plan. Enable us to fall in line with it, Lord, with willing hearts. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Stay safe. Speak to you next week. <laughs>